Hello. Today we have a delightful question that concerns the sum of binomial coefficients spaced three terms apart. Before I proceed, let me mention that this question is taken from the book Higher Algebra, authored by Barnard and Child, and published by Arihant Publications. More specifically, it is taken from Chapter 5 on complex numbers. The fact that the solution of this problem requires us to make use of the theory of complex numbers is truly remarkable. Let us commence this video with the statement of the problem. We define three sums S1, S2 and S3. S1 equals n choose 0, plus n choose 3, plus n choose 6 and so on. S2 equals n choose 1, plus n choose 4, plus n choose 7 and so on. And S3 equals n choose 2, plus n choose 5, plus n choose 8 and so on. First, let me clarify what is meant by the three dots or ellipses. It means we go as far as possible in the sequence, where the last term n choose r is such that r is less than or equal to n, or in other words, r does not exceed n. For instance, in the case of S1, each r is a multiple of 3, and so the last term will have an r value that is the largest multiple of 3 that is less than or equal to n. Similarly, in S2, each r value is 1 more than a multiple of 3. We stop at the largest r value of this form that does not exceed n. The same is true for S3. The object of this video is to show that the following formula is true. Namely, si equals a third of 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine r pi by 3, where r equals n for i equals 1, r equals n minus 2 for i equals 2, and r equals n plus 2 for i equals 3. Taking our first steps, let us recall the familiar expansion for 1 plus x to the power n using the binomial theorem. Now, we shall proceed by substituting in different values for x and noting the various expansions we obtain. For x equals 1, the expansion collapses to the familiar identity for 2 to the power n as the sum of the binomial coefficients in the nth row of Pascal's triangle. We call this equation 1. Before going any further, let me raise a side note. Taking our cue from the theory of complex numbers and the complex cube roots of unity, we define omega as being negative half plus root 3 by 2 i. In so doing, we realize that omega is one of the two complex cube roots of unity. By unity, we mean the number 1. Omega can also be expressed as cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3. For this representation, we have just switched to using polar coordinates and have made use of the fact that the argument of omega is 2 pi by 3. We will make frequent use of both the expressions for omega throughout the course of the solution as both will aid our calculations. Now, the second complex cube root of unity is negative half minus root 3 by 2 i which is the complex conjugate of omega, as can be seen from this diagram of the three cube roots of 1. The reason the second complex cube root of unity appears as the conjugate of omega is for the simple reason that complex roots to polynomials with real coefficients are found in pairs, both having identical real components and imaginary components with opposite signs. To be more specific, the three cube roots of unity, complex or otherwise, are solutions to the polynomial x cubed minus 1 equals 0. Indeed, this equation has degree 3 and the fundamental theorem of algebra states that it should have at most three distinct roots. This equation has exactly three of them. Factoring the expression on the left hand side, we are left with two factors, one linear and one quadratic. That is, x minus 1 into x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. The solution to x minus 1 equals 0 is x equals 1, which is the only real root. The solution to x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0 yields omega and its conjugate. Interestingly enough, the conjugate of omega is omega squared. Proving this is simplicity itself. We know that omega into omega squared equals 1 by the definition of omega as a complex cube root of 1. So that gives us omega squared equals the reciprocal of omega. However, omega into its conjugate equals the modulus of omega squared which equals 1. The reason the modulus of omega equals 1 is since omega is a complex cube root of 1. When we cube its modulus, the result must necessarily be 1. In addition, omega lies on the unit circle in the complex plane. That is another testament to the fact that its modulus should be 1. With that preliminary out of the way, we have the statement, the conjugate of omega equals the reciprocal of omega. This quickly leads to the result that omega squared, which equals the reciprocal of omega, also equals the conjugate of omega. We can also see that omega squared equals the conjugate of omega by the fact that 4 pi upon 3 equals 2 pi minus 2 pi by 3. This gives 
omega squared equals cosine 4 pi by 3 plus i sine 4 pi by 3 which simplifies to cosine 2 pi by 3 minus i sine 2 pi by 3. This is since two angles that add up to 2 pi have the same cosine values while having sine values that are negatives of each other. This expression is precisely the complex conjugate of omega. Some more important facts are that omega squared squared equals omega to the power 4 which equals omega and 1 plus omega plus omega squared equals 0. The first relation is easily verified by the fact that omega squared into omega to the power 4 equals 1. This translates to omega to the power 4 equals the reciprocal of omega squared which equals omega as was shown before. The second statement arises from the fact that omega satisfies the equation 1 plus x plus x squared equals 0 since omega minus 1 is certainly not 0. For that matter, omega squared satisfies the same condition and hence 1 plus omega squared plus omega to the power 4 equals 0 as well. With this revision of the theory of complex numbers complete, we are ready to return to our problem that has patiently awaited us for a while now. Going back to the binomial expansion for 1 plus x to the power n and replacing x with omega and omega squared respectively, we are left with equations 2 and 3. Reading the first one out, it says 1 plus omega to the power n equals n choose 0 plus n choose 1 omega plus n choose 2 omega squared and so on, the last term being n choose n omega to the power n. Notice that the general term is of the form n choose r omega to the power r. Likewise, the second one says 1 plus omega squared to the power n equals n choose 0 plus n choose 1 omega squared plus n choose 2 omega to the power 4 all the way up to n choose n omega to the power 2n. Here the general term is of the form n choose r omega to the power 2r. Adding equations 1, 2 and 3 and studying the characteristics of the general term, we discover numerous simplifications. Commencing our analysis, we see that n choose r is a common factor in each of the general terms and is one that we shall pull up. Inside, we get the expression 1 plus omega to the power r plus omega to the power 2r. This has to be broken down into two cases to find its value depending on r. The first case is where r is not a multiple of 3. In that case, taking stock of the division algorithm, we can write the equation r equals 3j plus m, where m is either 1 or 2 but not 0. In either case, omega to the power r equals omega to the power 3j plus m, which equals omega to the power m, since omega raised to any multiple of 3 will yield 1, as that is the very definition of omega. If m equals 1, 1 plus omega to the power r plus omega to the power 2r equals 1 plus omega plus omega squared which equals 0 as was discussed earlier and if m equals 2 the expression simplifies to 1 plus omega squared plus omega to the power 4 which also equals 0 since omega to the power 4 equals omega. In both cases m being 1 or 2 1 plus omega to the power r plus omega to the power 2r equals 0. In the case that r is a multiple of 3 we have that 1 plus omega to the power r plus omega to the power 2r equals 3 because omega to the power r equals 1. After simplifying as much as we can, we see that the summation of equations 1, 2 and 3 gives us the following expression 3 into n choose 0 plus n choose 3 plus n choose 6 and so on which equals 2 to the power n plus 1 plus omega to the power n plus 1 plus omega squared to the power n. The expression inside the parentheses on the left hand side should be familiar to us as it is nothing but s1. It results since the only terms that survive are those where r is a multiple of 3. All the rest cancel out to 0. We will now endeavor to obtain closed form expressions of 1 plus omega to the power n and 1 plus omega squared to the power n which are members of the right hand side. We see that 1 plus omega equals 1 plus cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3. Here we make use of two well known trigonometric identities on the RHS. The first relates cosine theta to cosine 2 theta. It says that 2 cosine square theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Similarly, we also use the identity for sine 2 theta. Putting it all together, we obtain 1 plus omega equals 2 cosine squared pi by 3 plus i into 2 sine pi by 3 cosine pi by 3, which equals 2 cosine pi by 3 into cosine pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3. The common factor of 2 cosine pi by 3 is factored out. Those of you with a sharp memory will remember that cosine pi by 3 equals a half. Therefore, the RHS simplifies to cosine pi by 3 plus i sine pi by 3. Upon raising both sides to n and applying De Morbihan's theorem, we have 
1 plus omega to the power n equals cosine n pi by 3 plus i sine n pi by 3. In like manner, we obtain the closed form expressions for 1 plus omega squared to the power n. A similar analysis to the previous case yields the result 1 plus omega squared equals 2 cosine pi by 3 into cosine pi by 3 minus i sine pi by 3. Notice how 1 plus omega squared is the complex conjugate of 1 plus omega, just as omega squared is the conjugate of omega. The justification of this fact is trivial. The same real number is getting added to both omega and omega squared, while the imaginary components remain unchanged and so the fact that they are negatives of each other still stays true. Raising the expression for 1 plus omega squared to the power n, we find that it equals cosine n pi by 3 minus i sine n pi by 3. Adding 1 plus omega to the power n to 1 plus omega squared to the power n, we find that the sine terms cancel out as they have opposite signs. The cosines have equivalent arguments and so combine with a coefficient of 2. Thus the right hand side of the equation produced by the summation of equations 1, 2 and 3 gives us 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine n pi by 3, which very closely resembles the formula provided in the statement of the problem. The final and easiest step that now remains is to switch the 3 over to the other side of the equation to get it into the form that we desire. Doing this, we have s1 equals n choose 0 plus n choose 3 plus n choose 6 and so on equals a third of 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine n pi by 3, which is exactly what we sought out to prove. With the case for s1 shown to be true, we now turn our attention to s2. We apply similar principles as we did in the case of s1 to arrive at our answer. It should be noted that now all the hard work that the problem demands has been completed in computing S1 and all that is left is some simple algebraic manipulation to drive the problem home. Continuing our journey, we now compute omega squared into 1 plus omega to the power n, which we name equation 4 by multiplying equation 2 by omega squared. Then we calculate omega into 1 plus omega squared to the power n by multiplying equation 3 by omega. This is named equation 5. Equations 2 and 3 were defined earlier in the video. Again, looking at the general terms, we notice that for equation 4, it takes the form n choose r omega to the power r plus 2 and for equation 5, it takes the form n choose r omega to the power 2r plus 1. Once we add equations 1, 4 and 5, only those terms survive that are incorporated in S2. Indeed, we find that the general term takes the form n choose r into 1 plus omega to the power r plus 2 plus omega to the power 2r plus 1. Observe how we can write omega to the power 2r plus 1 as omega to the power 2r plus 4 owing to the fact that omega cube equals 1. This gives us the expression 1 plus omega to the power r plus 2 plus omega to the power 2r plus 4 encased within the parentheses. If r plus 2 is not a multiple of 3 or in other words r is not congruent to 1 mod 3, the expression in the parentheses simplifies to 0. The reasoning is the same as in the case of S1, since applying the division algorithm to r plus 2 this time, we will get a remainder m that is either 1 or 2 but not 0. This yields the expression 1 plus omega to the power m plus omega to the power 2m, which was shown earlier to be 0, when m takes on the values 1 and 2. In the case that r plus 2 is a multiple of 3, 1 plus omega to the power r plus 2 plus omega to the power 2r plus 1 equals 3, as m equals 0. That is why after adding equations 1, 4 and 5 on the left hand side, we have 3 into n choose 1 plus n choose 4 plus n choose 7 and so on. Only those terms where r leaves a remainder of 1 on division by 3 make it through the artificial sieve we have created. On the right hand side, we have the terms 2 to the power n omega squared into 1 plus omega to the power n and omega into 1 plus omega squared to the power n. Getting closed form expressions for the second and third terms mentioned should now be easier than breathing air. We have that omega squared into 1 plus omega to the power n equals cosine 2 pi by 3 minus i sine 2 pi by 3 into cosine n pi by 3 plus i sine n pi by 3. Adding the arguments gives us cosine n minus 2 pi by 3 plus i sine n minus 2 pi by 3. Recall that the argument for omega squared was negative 2 pi by 3. Similarly, omega into 1 plus omega squared to the power n equals cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3 into cosine n pi by 3 minus i sin n pi by 3 which equals cosine n minus 2 pi by 3 minus i sin n minus 2 pi by 3. 
adding omega squared into 1 plus omega to the power n and omega into 1 plus omega squared to the power n yields 2 cosine n minus 2 pi by 3. Once again, the sign terms cancel since they are negatives of each other. Curiously, they are also the only terms contributing to the imaginary components. Compiling all our findings, we see that the right hand side of the equation produced from adding equations 1, 4 and 5 simplifies to 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine n minus 2 pi by 3 and this equals 3s2. Lastly, the 3 is brought to the other side of the equation to match the form given in the statement of our problem. A closer investigation reveals that the formula we have established does indeed match with the one given on the first page for the case i equals 2. More precisely, r equals n minus 2. Finally, the case S3, which has waited its turn long enough, comes into the spotlight. In like fashion to the previous two cases, we compute two new expressions, omega into 1 plus omega to the power n and omega squared into 1 plus omega squared to the power n. We shall call these equations 6 and 7 respectively. Equation 6 is equation 2 multiplied by omega and equation 7 is equation 3 multiplied by omega squared. Notice how in the case of S2, we calculated omega squared into 1 plus omega to the power n and omega into 1 plus omega squared to the power n. Here we have done exactly the opposite in the sense that equation 2 is being multiplied by omega and equation 3 by omega squared. After adding equations 1, 6 and 7, each term takes on the following form. N choose r into 1 plus omega to the power r plus 1 plus omega to the power 2 r plus 2. The terms that survive are those where r is congruent to 2 mod 3. These are the terms present in S3. We can leverage the same reasoning as in the previous two cases. If r plus 1 is not a multiple of 3, it leaves a remainder m that is either 1 or 2 on division by 3. In both cases, the expression 1 plus omega to the power m plus omega to the power 2m comes out to 0. In the case that m equals 0, the expression has a value of 3. This leaves us with the equation 3 into n choose 2 plus n choose 5 plus n choose 8 and so on, which equals 3s3 equals 2 to the power n plus omega into 1 plus omega to the power n plus omega squared into 1 plus omega squared to the power m. Here, omega into 1 plus omega to the power n equals cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i sine 2 pi by 3 into cosine n pi by 3 plus i sine n pi by 3. This equals cosine n plus 2 pi by 3 plus i sine n plus 2 pi by 3. In similar stride, omega squared into 1 plus omega squared to the power n equals cosine 2 pi by 3 minus i sine 2 pi by 3 times cosine n pi by 3 minus i sine n pi by 3. This can be replaced by cosine n plus 2 pi by 3 minus i sine n plus 2 pi by 3. Finally, the right hand side of the sum of 1, 6 and 7 condenses to 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine n plus 2 pi by 3. And moving the 3 to the other side gives S3 equals n choose 2 plus n choose 5 plus n choose 8 and so on, which equals a third of 2 to the power n plus 2 cosine n plus 2 pi by 3. With the successful computation of S3 comes the culmination of our problem and what a remarkable one it was. This problem serves as a fine example of those cases when complex numbers rear their heads in the most unexpected places. How, one could wonder, do complex numbers help in the solution of problems posed entirely in the real numbers? This problem provides the answer. It even illustrates some of the general techniques used in solving problems of this type, while at the same time reminding the student of the great underlying interconnectedness of various mathematical theories. One realizes that brute force term by term calculation is not always the optimal strategy and many times an indirect approach is the right way to go as we have shown in this video. So that is all for now. Hope to see you in a future video.